stop to drift away like a flowing river run away get away trying to outrun your sorrow Right, here we go Facebook, this is part 3 of the interview with Tommy Long. We've got the prologue that went up earlier on, that's uh, covering the first song with the line roar. Uh, but this, we're going to go into the full recording history. So, uh, I think we're in Stuart McLeod, the studio in Airdrie. Yes, I believe you're right. I imagine this must have been about the year hmm, 2000, 2001, something like that. It's an album called Borderline. This is uh, probably as contemporary as I get, you know. And uh, let me see. It's just me and Stuart. Stuart McLeod is an excellent you know, all round. Uh, engineer. And recording board, you know, as well as you know, multi instrumental. He, uh, so he played guitar, electric guitar, in quite a few tracks. And uh, I just I think there's any harmonica on that. I don't think there is. I don't think there is. You must have tricked her. But uh, 2014 tracks as well. Quite a lot for an album, isn't it? 14. So, uh, and then there's this kind of strange, <laughs> kind of strange <laughs> compilation. And I think this is all the just all the odds and ends stuff I never made onto this album or that album or uh, you know stuff that's lying about. It's just I'll just go in it and stick them down. So that, that was the next thing. But that was with Stuart as well. And I took a mate of mine then, who's uh, no longer with us, a guy called uh, uh, well, Liam. He always wanted to be, his name was Neeson, right? Bill was his real name, Bill always wanted to be called Liam. <laughs> Liam Neeson, you know. And he played all, oh, you name it, you know, mandolin and fiddle and the bowering and all these sort of roots sort of music stuff, you know, and uh, so I took him in with me, and he, he's on that, and Stuart, and me, and we got some harmonica in there. Um, years, I, c I couldn't really say. It was quite, it was quite, quite country by that. I think it was some of the country stuff. I'd written out an album, country album, for the guy who said, I, can you write that? I said, well, okay, try it. I said, do that then. I says, I've got the recording gear and uh, at home and I'll produce it. So we did that and then, of course, by the time I got that done, he'd moved on to other things, usual, you know. But I, I sort of re-manipulated some of the tracks and used them elsewhere, you know. Um, in fact, the girl with the sun in her hair, that was, that was one that immersed out of that. Should be some news on that soon. Aye. The King's out in the minute, right? That's right. Uh, we're using that girl with the sun in her hair, background music and an advert in the America, Miami, basically, in Fort Lauderdale. And, uh, you need to put that one up, up on Bingley, will you know? Put it on Facebook or YouTube. Oh, I'll go up soon. I'll go up Aye, uh, Yeah, once I've got it finished and it's been approved. Alright, okay. So, um And then there was a, a period after that where, you know, for oh, quite a few years, you know, I wasn't doing anything at all musically, really. Or writing songs. And then I sat down and thought, you know, let's put pen to paper and see if we can come up with something, you know, so... This is a, an album called um, Songs for the Singing. And it had a few sort of uh, Celtic-y sort of flavoured 
numbers lying about, you know, and I thought to myself, I wonder if I could write enough in this same vein to do an album. So I managed that, went in and recorded that. And I had a friend of mine played bass, Craig Forsyth, on it, and uh, I played up for called Churlish Saxena. And that's Indian extraction, you know. Playing the Indian, you know. Uh, once the thing was done, a lion. Um, with the stuff, songs that I'd learned over the years, uh, you know, uh, acoustic guitar, sort of finger style guitar, blues and ragtime, and a bit of slide guitar, that sort of stuff. So that was the next thing I went in. That was uh, Stuart McLeod. And that was just, just me, just guitar and voice. I must have done 20, I think it was 26 tracks in a day, right? And he was like, he said, I've never recorded as much stuff as this ever in my life, you know? Because he just did bands and things coming in that it would take a whole day to set up the drums for this carry on, you know? So we've done this thing with 26. I think there's actually 22 on the album, that was the album Let the Cat Play. So, um, Airdrie, right, so I was living with my guy at the time. So we're starting off at 10 o'clock in the morning. So I had to get there for 10, you know, so it was, oh, how did I do it? Train and a bus. Train and a bus, two, two trains. Two trains. Get there for ten. Now, when I worked with Charlie Saxena, he was one of these guys. If we were rehearsing anything, he'd come to the house and we'd we say, let's get through this, and we'd say, let him come to this bit, play this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, right, you are, you know, and I'm waiting on writing something, but then, no, see, he must be remembering it all, right? Fiddle away, right, we'll see you next week. I come back next week and open it, and it was opposite. Fiddle never been out the case, right? I said, no, right, here we go, we'll do the thing with it. Oh, how's that one go again, right? And it was this all the time. It's if he never learned anything, right? And he learned it just there for that particular, and it was gone again, you know, you had to relearn that every time, you know, Jesus Christ. So, uh, we went <laughs> and recorded the studio. <laughs> It was the same, same situation. I thought, surely Christ, you know, to <laughs> record these songs, he would have sat and went through them, or, you know, on his own, like, you know, and says, I remember this bit, I remember that bit. Look out there, and he was <laughs> man the wiser. Recording, costing his money, you know what I mean? I had to teach him every fiddle part. Up a piano, in the wee room, and then we go and play it. And then the next song, same again, you know. So God only knows, he's been playing fiddle all his life. God, he must have just learned all these, came for the settlements or something, he must have learned all these stuff when he was a kid. And you, you know, it was just second nature, but you, you take him out of that and try and build something else, it's totally alien. So uh, what we used to do is, uh, when I first started, I just wanted to go in and sit with an acoustic guitar and sing at the same time. So it's just like, oh no, no, no. Need to record all that anyway, we'll need to think with. Go in and do the guitar first and then put the vocals in the top, you know. And it says, and we'll get a better recording into the bargain, you know, so that, that's the way we did it. But he just asked the names of the songs. You know, he didn't say, let, let, let me, how does this go, what does it sound like, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes we tried a, a thing with a click track, you know, but I was never, never good at playing a click track. And sometimes we just do it 
freestyle, free time, you know. But we've got, we got through them anyway. Uh, so there was a few years in between where I never, never done very much at all. I was living in Greenock and uh, I remember phoning Stuart up in the studio one day. I says, what, what free time have you got? She was looking through the thing. He says, so, he says, he says, in about three weeks' time, he says, I've got a week. He says, after that, it's for the polish, you know. He says, we can be that week. He says, we can get it all done in that week. That'll be fine. We can get that done. He says, OK. He says, this, what's this? Uh, and I'll ask you, I hopefully an album. He says, right, what, uh, many, many songs. I says, well, it was 14. I says, in the last one, I says, well, do 14 again. He says, you got them all written? I says, no, I've got one. Right? He says, you're going to write 13 songs in three weeks? I says, aye. He says, okay, good, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that was a plan. Having said that, well, the one song I drank was a song called Gyrotune. And I was, uh, I was driving through uh, Port Glasgow, well, I've been driving through Port Glasgow. We were met mine a bass player. And I was looking at it, and it was so. It was, everybody looked at it dejected, you know, it was right, right run down, you know. And I just, right with the blue, I just caught this is the right gyro tune, isn't it? And a ping, you know, I thought, there's a song in that, you know. I said to the, I said to the Greg at the time, I says, Gyro tune, I says, there's a song in that. I said, I'll, I'll write a song, you know. It's, and I did, you know, that was, I had that one written. Now, the 13 songs, um, my process of writing is, I write stuff that, People say things, like so, um, I've got a mate, David, and he always says, oh, I can never mind, see, tomorrow is another day, right? And I thought, oh, ping, there we go again, tomorrow is another, that's the title, that's a, that's a song title, I said, oh, I'll write a song in that, and I would write that down. So I've been writing stuff down for years, and I got a wee dictaphone and all that, uh, from sitting messing about in the guitar, and a, a, a nice tune, got my nice chords, I says, get a dicto one and I'll play that on there and I can, can always go back to that, refer to that at any time. So I had a lot of melodies without any words. A lot of just bits and pieces, fragments and things, you know. And the strangest thing was I could not couldn't write during the day. Just well I just never felt girls to be able to sit and write, you know, during the day, so well, you start about midnight, <laughs> you start about midnight, you know, and within, you know, between midnight and about two or something like that, I would sort of piece a song together and then I would, well, the biggest problem with me writing songs is subject matter. Once I know what the subject matter is going to be, then I can piece the song together quite readily, you know. So, uh, within that three weeks, I wrote the other 13 songs and went in. And we did them in a week. The 14 songs. So on that, it's just acoustic guitar and uh, harmonica. I don't think... Oh, I did, it played the thing with. Anyway. He had a, what do you call it, one of these things? Baritone guitar. National. National steel. Baritone guitar, and he played slide on it, you know. That was good, that added a lot to a lot of the songs, you know. And this album was called One for Days. And uh, it was in remembrance, really, of a friend of mine. Jesse McGowan, come out and see